The Square Ball Podcast. Hello there, welcome to the show. It's brought to you by The Square Ball and The Athletic. Dan Moylan with you from The Square Ball. Phil Hay here as well from The Athletic. Show is brought to you uh, by Levi Solicitors. For a limited time, you can get 15% off the big three legal services, wills, probate and conveyancing, levisolicitors.co.uk forward slash Monday Club or quote Monday Club when you contact Levi's. You can get your regular 10% off your legal fees as well and everything else. Levi's have legal services for both you personally and for your business. levisolicitors.co.uk forward slash Monday Club. Phil Hay. Hello. We are setting ourselves a challenge with this new show, The Monday Club, um, which we've moved over to the to the Square Ball feed if you want to uh, listen and add it to your podcast app if you're not following us on there already. Uh, the challenge is to talk about the weekend's game in 15 minutes, no more than 15 minutes. We've even got a timer. You will hear it ticking. You will hear it not throughout. You will hear the full-time whistle come in when 15 minutes is up. Phil, what on earth are we going to do today? <laughs> It, it could be it could be 15 seconds today or eight hours, couldn't it? <laughs> Sum this up in one word, and then we'll uh, we'll go home, which of which many would suffice. Um, right. Do, well, do you want to start me off before I get cracking? Well, of course we need to uh, set the sound effects going. Yeah. So 15 minutes, <laughs> Phil. Hey, it starts now. I reckon the abiding memory of this game will always be Roy Hodgson shaking hands with everybody in the dugout about two minutes before the game even finished. He was in the press conference afterwards sounding very jovial and I suspect has never had that much fun at Ellen Road. Probably hasn't had that much fun in 45 minutes many times in all the years that he's been managing. Uh, Grassi was talking uh, earlier this week in his press conference before the Palace game about you know how, how old Hodgson is, how long he's been going for, was asked, you know, do you see yourself managing at the age of 75? To which Grassi said, no, absolutely not. You know, definitely, definitely will not do that. Uh, but I, as we've said before, somebody should probably tell him that in managing Leeds, he'll feel like he's 75 anyway by the time it's finished. Um, this game being a, a perfect example. I'm really struggling to think of the last time I saw a game quite like it. It's not that you, I've seen that over the years ample capitulations or bad defeats or situations that look fairly promising and then end up delivering nothing. But I can't remember seeing a team going in at half time and okay in Palace had had little moments in the first half and it hadn't been quite as dominant from Leeds in the build up to half time as it had been in, in the first half hour but Leeds were very dominant in that period they were controlling the play the pressing was really intense Palace were kind of struggling with the movement particularly out wide a lot of chances for Sinistera Sam Johnson terrific half in goal for Palace which in the end was as crucial as anything else that, that went on today but it was their half and, and the exception to that being the inability to defend set pieces. You know, every time Palace had a corner or a free kick, Leeds looked flimsy and, and didn't really seem to have the organisation that they needed. And that's where the equaliser came from. But straight away after half time, it was like they just physically disappeared. I've, I've written about this for Monday and I was saying it was like dropping an aspirin in a glass of water. It just went. And everything that had been good about them was no longer there. The things that they were doing well, they started to do incredibly, incredibly badly. And it became apparent that having been in possession, they'd been able to dominate out of possession. They weren't able to cope. And they started to get dribbled by um, by um, Eze, by Elise, with real ease. It was kind of like paper bag resistance sometimes to it. And Palace, little by little, started to run riot. Um, and you didn't feel like Leeds were going to get a grip. You could see it slipping away. Um, rapidly in the second half. You could tell in Grassi's body language as well that he he reached the point eventually where there's very little point ranting and raving uh, from the sidelines because it's not going to make any difference. You almost have to stand and suffer in silence and just wait for the final whistle to let you um, get out of it. And it, you know, at, a minute before half time, you're sitting thinking this is shaping up to be a, a perfect week in what was a very big week of fixtures ideally moving on to 32 points if you can um, see out a win against Palace and, and putting yourself in a good position. And at the end of it, it feels like that massive dent to confidence. Um, and psychologically, it's definitely definitely going to have an impact. Do we need to shoulder some of the responsibility with this one? Because we were talking in the run-up to doing the, the Phil Hayes show over on the Athletic feed um, about how Leeds had essentially become more normal again. Yes, Yes, um, it's the Leeds United way, isn't it? It's like calm to capitulation in in the blink of an blink of an eye. Um, although weirdly, you know, 
I, I had a few people I was noticing on Twitter who were saying to me in the first half, it, we just feel like a normal football team again when they're using the wings, we're, we're kind of varying the play, mixing it up, um, keeping Palace guessing and, and keeping the pressure on them. And that was absolutely right. Um, it was that sort of bewildering collapse a little bit like that infamous playoff game against Derby, you know, a few years back, where you're so struggling to understand what's going on, and and as 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 it continues and as it escalates, you you start to feel that a lot of it must be psychological. I asked Grassi afterwards, "Do you think the players allowed that equaliser to affect them more than it should have done?" And he said, "Yes, you know, he said I, I think that was the key moment, and they did just become weirdly passive immediately after half time. It, to have looked at the first half." you would have said that there was a very obvious blueprint for what you had to carry on doing, which was to to try as best you could to continue to dominate Palace. And in dominating Palace, you would take players like Eze and Elise out of the game, as opposed to doing what they did, which was to become more and more defensive and, and more and more negative, like a, a yard behind everything, whether it was intentional or not. And what that meant was that Elise had, you know, the, the half of his life um, was sort of being made to look unplayable. Eze and others started to come into it in a big way. And they were just scoring for fun, weren't they? It was genuinely one of those games where every time they attacked, you felt as if it was going to gonna end in a goal. And I almost feel like Leeds were a little lucky to get out of that only conceding five. Do you think it was as simple as heads just going? It felt like it. I mean, if... Grassi didn't explain afterwards. We did say to him, how do you explain that? And he said, I can't really, you know, and, and I, I know where he's coming from. Um, although over the next few days and before Liverpool at home, he's going to have to find a way to um, to properly work out why that happened and find a way to, to kind of stop that being a, re- a recurring issue, although it's late in the day in terms of this season to be addressing things psychologically and, and everything else. If on his part it was um, a deliberate move to concede possession to Palace and to try and protect um, their 1-0 lead, then it failed badly. But I don't get the sense that it was at all. It, it, it was very hard to, very hard to know why it was that the the confidence that should have come from the first half had, had dissipated so badly, and it did feel as if that Palace equaliser was like busting the balloon. You know, it was like sticking a needle in it. And did the players kind of doubt their ability to go back to the well again? Did they kind of, did they kind of succumb to the fear that we should have been, well, could have been out of sight in this game? And actually, Palace are, are right back in it. Um, whatever it was, it's not a good sign at this stage of, of a relegation fight. And it does make the table look far less healthy than it might have done this afternoon. What do you think it was that, that, that changed specifically? Was there anything or Was it just a the, case of the timing of the goals? The, the thing... Well, obviously, obviously, Palace took all of the chances or, or took a lot of the chances and were really ruthless. But the, the the thing that I think jumped out was that having seen very little of Eze or Elise in open play in the first half, you were starting to see them all the time. And the reason that you were starting to see them all the time was because Palace suddenly had far more of the ball, had far better position um, on the pitch, were playing beyond halfway a lot more, were pinning leads back. And the more that Elise and Eze came into the game, the more Palace were likely to threaten. They are really good players. Um, and if you give them space to play in, the, the way they move, the way they pass and, and the, the control of the ball can really, really cause you problems. So they were suddenly allowed to dictate, having really been, I don't know if it would be fair to say that they were passengers in the first half, but they weren't influential, weren't influential in a big way. And that's because they had very little decent possession to feed on. But in the second half, it was set up for them to them to shine. Uh, and they, they absolutely did. And, you know, there's there's no way of pretending that at any point in that second half, Gracia was able to um, find a way to to tip the balance. And if in if, if anything, Leeds just seemed to get worse as as the half went on. Do you think Hodgson taught him maybe a bit of a tactical lesson there? It looked to me like you mentioned, like uh, Elise and Eze, that Palace were just hitting them earlier, um, and as a consequence, we were higher up the pitch. There was there was moving it quicker and more accurate, accurately, um, specifically. They they definitely improved after half time. They they weren't massively impressive before the interval, um, but much better after it. And yeah, I I think because of the way the game was developing, they started to gain confidence in knowing that if they were playing to Eze, Elise, others like that, you know, um, going forward, that they were going to get some joy and that it was going to work out for them. And also, you know, the threat from Leeds just seemed to dry up completely. Uh, You know, that onslaught that, if you couldn't call it an onslaught, but a lot of shots on goal in the first half, a lot of really good saves from, from Johnston that kind of busy shift for him 
became a bit of a deck chair in the second half. It wasn't like he was, you know, wildly up against it. It wasn't like he was resisting a huge amount. And I think at one all, you felt like it was a game that could suddenly go either way, but you felt that it would be tight regardless. It just did not see that all out collapse coming. Um it's something that, that Gracia will have to have to work on this week. We'll have to have to look at and address because that will that will affect the players. You know, you can't I don't think you can come out of a game like that. Different at Arsenal. You know, away from Arsenal, I didn't really class that as a particularly bad day at the office because Arsenal do that and Arsenal are that good. But this goes down as Gracia's first bad day at the office, first properly bad day at the office. And it 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 will need addressing. Do you think there's something to worry about for Leeds? What was the general mood like in the athletic comments in the, the discussion afterwards? I think people are anxious, yeah. Um, I think you you there are certain fixtures falling in the fixture list that you know you have to take something from or should take something from. And it felt like a win today would have given Leeds the opportunity to potentially get themselves out of this before it gets, you know, properly fraught and, and reaches the absolute sharp end as it did last season when they, they stayed up on, on the last day. When these games slip away, suddenly you realise that it's Liverpool at home next. And as much as Liverpool blow hot, blow cold, are just not the same animal that they were under Jurgen Klopp last season, it's still very dangerous. It's still riddled with really good players. So that's a game that potentially might yield nothing. It therefore is a weekend where the, the table might shift again. And... You know, Leeds are sitting 16th at the moment, two points above the bottom three. So they're still not in the bottom three, but they're absolutely right there and, and they're there to there to target. And and that's a that's a problem. It's a it's a definite concern. But the fact is really, you know, they've uh, Grassi was talking afterwards about I want us to learn a, a lesson from a hard day. Um I think Leeds have been le- learning lessons from hard days for longer than is longer than is good for them now, you know, longer than is healthier. Now, it has been such a battle this season and last season. And, you know, again, it's not as if on 29 points you're a mile away from the finishing line, but they, they need results and they're still a side who've only won seven times this season. Is the primary lesson from today then, is it about taking your chances? You've just got to take your chances when they come because we should have been out of sight in that first half, shouldn't we? Barring the slight weaknesses that were apparent on set pieces and corners. I don't think it is just that because some of the some of the chances were really well saved by Johnston. You know, some of them were, were sneaking in the corner, fingertip stuff. I think the lesson is more that if you, if, if you aren't able to sustain what you're doing, you won't get away with it. You know, you can't play well for a half um, and, and then fold in, in the second half and expect um, for anything to come come out of it you know you, you're not going to pick up points you will get beaten Gracia said that afterwards you know if, if there's one thing we can learn from this it's that if we aren't doing it properly and if we're not at full tilt then we're going to have problems and we're going to have trouble like we did today but I mean that you know that should be should be fairly apparent anyway there are definitely things that he's going to have to have to look at I think I think the right back position and Luke Ayling there needs addressed it's been I think it's been obvious to people over a few games now. There was the, the goal at, at Wolves, which, you know, was a, a big moment and positive moment for Ailing. But it's not been easy for him the last few games. I do think that's a point of weakness. You know, it was it was him who lost Ayu for the header um at, at two one. And you could see him holding his head in his hands and you could see him thinking that, you know, shouldn't have done that. Bad mistake. So so he he kind of knows. And they were weak there. They were weak and obviously Furpo was booked, put Christensen on um, at, at left back. Elise gave him the run around. Elise was such a handful in the second half. I, I still, you know, I, I guess even though Grass has come in and I think the weeks have been good to him so far up until this point, it is still a squad that's struggled all season. It is still a squad or a team with deficiencies. And I think that's the point to go back to it without labouring it because we've spoken about this many times. But it's not that there aren't good footballers in this squad, they just, over the course of a season, they just haven't been pieced into a quality team. Do you think Javi Gracia looked a little bit surprised? Do you think this game caught yeah. him on the hop a little bit too? Yeah, no, absolutely. That, that was the point I was making, was that towards the end, you know, it was like a bit wide-eyed, odd rubber the nose, hands on hips. Um, I, I think I think there definitely does come a point in games where it's going as badly as that, where you realise that you can... You have the option of trying to be seen to be influencing things from the touchline, but at five one down, sometimes it actually looks better to just stand there and take it, you know, and to suck it up and say, "Look, this has been a disaster. There's no point in me pretending that I'm 
going to magically fix this now because I'm not. It's gone horribly wrong. We haven't got it right. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the, you know, to go back to that question, can you explain what happened? I can't explain. You know, that's that's what he said. I think he was pretty much as, as stunned as the rest of us. And it was like to, a totally baffled crowd around us in the West Stand. Everybody just just sat there thinking can't believe this is can't believe this is happening and particularly can't believe this is happening at the hands of of Palace who do have good players in the team but again have not been a good side this season and have not waltzed through matches in the way that they they did today um and there was honestly nobody looking more relaxed um at the end of it than Hodgson shades of that um that Wigan game in the pre-promotion season no because i don't think I don't think the stakes were the same. I don't think there was pressure riding it on it in the same way. It was an important game today. Clearly it was, but you know, Leeds have still got another eight to play before the season finishes. I think what happened against Wigan was that it suddenly got into everybody's head that they were really close and they were right there. And all it was going to take was a win against the side who had 10 men um, and conceded the first goal. And it wasn't a case in any way. I would never say it was a case of Bielsa's players thinking it was easy. But I think when it became difficult, um, they started to say to themselves, oh dear, and you could see that creeping in. And final thought then, before we sign off and the whistle goes, which is about to in any second, do we just have to dust ourselves off and get on with this one? Absolutely, yeah. Good timing, Phil. Right on the whistle. Any final thoughts then in extra time before we head off? Um, people might have seen the accounts. Should probably touch on the accounts quickly. I'm not going to be here for Thursday's podcast because I'm on a week off with the kids, Easter holidays, all that sort of well, stuff. Should, should we pick that apart properly when you're back the week after in the Phil Hay show? Yeah, um, definitely. I'll just quickly say I think it pretty much paints them in the same light as a lot of Premier League clubs, which is heck of a lot of money coming in, heck of a lot of money going out. Um, you're fine for as long as you don't get relegated and you can cover the shortfall via shareholders or transfer sales. Um, and interesting to note that they paid £15.5 million for Augustine. Just got, to stay up. Just got to stay up now then. Yes, that, that's indeed. It. That's all we have to do. That wraps up then at the Phil Hey Monday Club for this week. Another 15-minute challenge then coming your way. Next week, uh, which will be ahead of the Liverpool game, presumably. Yes, unless you want to delay until afterwards. Your choice, your show. <laughs> Shouldn't have called it the Monday Club, should we? <laughs> Shouldn't have called it the Monday Club. Right, thanks for joining us on this one. We'll speak to you soon. The Square Ball Podcast.